need help with GED science physics, well you're in the right place. Because in this video we're going to simplify force and motion and demystify Newton's laws of motion to help you boost your score on GED science so you can pass quickly and move on to bigger and better things in life. Oh, and if you're new here, my name's Parker, I'm the founder of TestPrepChampions.com, here teaching you how to pass the GED fast and make sure you're subscribed for more videos like this in the future. So let's start off with some force and motion basics with some important terms here. The first term is speed. And speed is the rate at which an object moves. So let's say that you're either driving a car or you're riding in a car and you're going 45 miles per hour. So that's an example of a speed. So now let's say that you're going 45 miles per hour and let's say that the direction is west. You're going 45 miles per hour and the direction is west. So velocity is defined as speed in a given direction. So if we just say 45 miles per hour, that's an example of a speed. But if we say 45 miles per hour going west or north or south or whatever the direction happens to be, that's an example of velocity. Because again, velocity is speed in a given direction. So we also have to talk about acceleration. And acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. So let's say that you're in the city and this is the way that people in the city drive. So they're cruising along and as they come to a yellow light, they press the gas pedal down and try to accelerate through the light before it turns red and they have to stop. So that's an example of acceleration, right? So changing speed would be acceleration and it could also be changing direction. So if you're driving and then you take a right turn or a left turn, or if you reverse the car, you're changing your direction. So acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. Additionally, it's very important to understand what we mean by force. So a force is defined as any interaction that changes the motion or state of rest of an object. So for example, let's consider a golf ball. So the golf ball is on the tee and it appears to be in a state of rest. It does not appear to be moving. So when a golfer takes the golf club and hits the golf ball, he's applying or she is applying a force to the golf ball. Now, another example would be a jar of marbles. So let's say that someone takes a jar of marbles, turns the marble upside down and the marbles fall down on the floor. Why do the marbles fall down instead of falling up? Well, it's because the force of gravity is what pushes these marbles down instead of up. Speaking of gravity, legend has it that Sir Isaac Newton was sitting underneath an apple tree when he watched an apple fall to the ground, and that inspired him to formulate his theory of gravity. Sir Isaac Newton was one of the most influential scientists of all time, and he came up with three laws of motion that we're going to look at right now. Newton's first law is the law of inertia which states that an object at rest stays at rest until a force acts on it, and an object in motion stays in motion in a straight line and at a constant speed until a force acts on it. So, for example, let's consider hockey. So, if a player hits a hockey puck, that puck should keep moving, according to Newton's law, that puck should keep moving at a constant speed, meaning it's not going to slow down or speed up, in a straight line, which means that it's not going to change direction. And it's going to keep moving in a straight line at a constant speed until a force acts on it. So Newton's second law is sometimes just called the law of motion, or it can be called the law of acceleration. And it states that the acceleration of an object depends on the mass and force. And so we can write an equation, and this is a, a very famous equation, and it's important to understand for the GED test. And the equation is F equals M times A. And of course, F stands for force, M stands for mass, and A stands for acceleration. Just think about weightlifting. The greater the mass of the barbell, the more force you have to use to maintain constant acceleration. 
So Newton's third law is the law of momentum, as it's often called, and it states that when an object gains momentum in a given direction, another object must receive equal momentum in the opposite direction. So in other words, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that's a lot simpler of a way to put it. So, for example, consider a baseball player. So a baseball player is going to swing their bat and it strikes the ball and what happens? Well, the ball is going to go in the opposite direction because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Also, now consider runners. So when runners jog, okay, what's happening? Well, they're exerting a force on the ground, but there's also an equal and opposite reaction, which is why while running is really good for your cardiovascular health, runners often end up with pain in their feet or joints from running, and that's because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If you think you've got this down, your next step is to go watch my GED practice test part two video where I have a question on Newton's laws. And also make sure you're subscribed down below for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Congratulations for taking a big step towards passing the GED test. This is Parker from Test Prep Champions wishing you the best of luck.